Have you ever noticed that some people lose fat quickly without eating less, while others cut everything and still see no change? Why does the same diet, with the same calories, trigger completely different responses in different bodies? What determines when fat is released and when it is tightly locked away? And why do hunger, fatigue, or intense cravings often appear precisely when you try hardest to control them? Perhaps the issue is not what you eat, but how your body interprets the biological signals behind it. When this is understood, fat loss stops being a question of how to do it and becomes a question of what is truly happening inside. To us, when it comes to fat loss, most people focus on the amount of food consumed. But at the most fundamental biological level, the determining factor is not calories, but how cells interpret safety versus threat. Fat is not simply excess energy, but a vital reserve shaped by hundreds of thousands of years of evolution. For this reason, the body does not easily release fat based on conscious intention alone. At the center of this process are hormones and energy signals. Each cell continuously receives information about its environment, especially the presence or absence of glucose in the bloodstream. When glucose appears frequently, cells interpret this as constant external energy availability. In that context, preserving fat becomes a safe strategy. The body has no reason to risk accessing stored reserves when supply seems reliable. When external energy signals decline for a sufficiently long period, cells begin to reassess. This does not happen instantly. Initially, the body responds by reducing energy expenditure, increasing hunger, and heightening attention toward food. These reactions are often misinterpreted as lack of willpower, but they are survival reflexes. The body is testing whether the change is temporary or a new condition requiring adaptation. The liver plays a central role during this phase. It determines whether the body continues operating primarily on blood sugar or begins accessing fat stores. When signals indicate that energy is no longer arriving consistently, the liver gradually reallocates energy flow, prioritizing stability for the brain and vital organs. This is a regulated adjustment, not the sudden switch many people imagine. Meanwhile, fat tissue itself is not passive. It communicates constantly with the brain through hormones such as leptin, signaling the status of energy reserves. If the brain interprets the overall situation as stressful or unsafe, fat tissue is more tightly protected, regardless of reduced food intake. This is why many people eat less, yet still retain fat, not because the body is resisting them, but because it is responding to perceived threat. What matters most is that the body does not distinguish between intentional dieting and environmental scarcity. It only responds to repeated patterns of signals. When those signals convey stability, fat gradually becomes accessible energy. When they convey instability, fat becomes an asset to protect. Understanding this biological logic reframes fat loss not as a battle, but as a process of restoring communication between internal systems. Once foundational mechanisms are in place, the story of fat loss moves to a deeper layer where the hormonal system and the nervous system jointly shape biological behavior. At this level, the question is no longer, is fat present? But, does the body permit access to fat? That decision is not made by conscious intent, but by a refined network of signals linking the brain, endocrine glands, and peripheral tissues. Insulin is often labeled a bad hormone, but biologically it is simply a messenger. Insulin tells cells that energy is abundant and storage makes sense. When insulin appears frequently, even at moderate levels, it creates a biological context of constant availability. In that context, the body has no reason to open its reserves. Fat is not locked because of overeating, but because eating signals occur too consistently. Counterbalancing insulin is a group of hormones, including glucagon, adrenaline, and growth hormone. These hormones do not directly burn fat but create conditions that allow fat mobilization. They become more prominent when the body experiences periods without incoming energy signals. Importantly, the brain does not activate these hormones simply because calories drop, but because it detects the formation of a different biological rhythm. The autonomic nervous system acts as a volume control for this entire process. When the body is under chronic psychological stress, sleep deprivation, or prolonged tension, sympathetic activity remains high. In that state, even with reduced food intake, 
the brain interprets the environment as threatening. As a result, energy conservation signals dominate, limiting access to fat. This explains why two people can eat similarly yet respond completely differently, because their neural context is not the same. The brain, particularly the hypothalamus, continuously integrates information from hormones, circadian rhythms, and emotional state. If these signals align towards safety, fat loss proceeds as a normal biological process. If not, compensatory responses emerge, including increased cravings, reduced expenditure, and mood shifts. These responses are not meant to sabotage human effort, but to preserve life in the way the brain considers optimal. The paradox is that the more aggressively the body is controlled through short-term, stressful interventions, the more the hormonal system reinforces defense. Conversely, when biological signals become consistent and predictable, fat protection gradually loosens. This shift is quiet, without a dramatic switch, unfolding instead as internal systems slowly resynchronize. When foundational and hormonal systems are already interacting, biological chain reactions begin to appear at the whole body level. This explains why many people feel their body behaves against expectations during fat loss. At this stage, the body no longer responds to individual meals, but to the entire pattern of signals accumulated over time. A key link in this chain is circadian rhythm. The timing of eating, sleeping, and movement forms a pattern the body uses to predict the near future. When that pattern is inconsistent, systems prioritize defense. When it becomes stable, even without drastic calorie reduction, the body begins adjusting toward more efficient use of stored energy. This is not a conscious choice, but the result of internal biological clocks gradually resynchronizing. Alongside circadian rhythm is the role of fat tissue as a communication organ. Fat tissue releases signals that influence satiety, energy levels, and even mood. When the brain receives signals that the environment has become more predictable, these signals change tone. Instead of driving food-seeking behavior, they become more neutral, allowing fat to be released without triggering emergency responses. Muscle also contributes to this chain reaction. Beyond consuming energy, muscle sends feedback signals about activity level and survival capacity. When muscle activity is maintained within a stable biological context, the brain interprets this as evidence that the body is resilient enough to tolerate change. This indirectly reduces fat protection. Conversely, prolonged fatigue reinforces defensive signaling. An often overlooked factor is the role of perception and emotion in biology. Psychological stress is not merely subjective. It is a real biological signal. It influences hormones, the nervous system, and cellular energy handling. When stress is chronic, the body behaves as if it is in a hostile environment, regardless of food intake. When stress subsides and biological signals become quieter, the same diet can produce entirely different outcomes. At this level, fat loss is no longer an isolated action, but the outcome of agreement among multiple systems. When the brain, hormones, fat tissue, and circadian rhythms convey the same message of safety, the body allows change to occur. When only one or two systems attempt to move ahead, defensive responses emerge. This explains why no single formula works for everyone, and why the same method can succeed for one person and fail for another. When looking at the full picture, what causes the body to lose fat is not a single action, but biological synchronization across multiple systems. The body does not respond to the desire to lose weight. It responds to signals about environmental safety. When these signals become stable, predictable, and less threatening, fat no longer needs to be overly protected. This does not happen through stronger discipline, but because the body stops interpreting change as danger. Understanding this mechanism helps break the familiar cycle of trying and failing, and reframes fat loss as a natural biological outcome. If this video helped you understand your body more clearly, consider liking, subscribing, and sharing your experience. Understanding the body is always the first step toward lasting change.